thinking about cosmetic injectables but you just don't know where to start? Well, in today's episode of Dr. Nora, I share with you my top tips when considering cosmetic injectables. The first thing I say to all of my patients when they walk through the door and say to me, hey doc, I really want to get something done for my face, I always ask them, why? What is your motivation? Now guys, this could be a number of things. I've heard it all. I've heard that it could be because they're just unhappy with something on their face. You might not be happy with a wrinkle on your forehead. You might be wanting to test the waters. You might be thinking about having, say, a permanent surgical procedure like a nose job, for example, but you just want to test the waters with a non-permanent procedure. For example, I have a lot of patients that come to me and they say, Doc, I really just want to see what my nose will look like when it's straight. And yes, we can do that with some dermal fillers. And so they want to try that before they commit to a bigger procedure, which involves anesthesia and it's got a surgical risk attached to it. In saying that though, there are plenty of risks associated with nose jobs that I'll talk to you about a little bit later on in my video. Very often I see salespeople that will come in and they feel like they need to keep up with their peers. For example, you can imagine a, a group of salespeople and every other person in that room has had something done. They may have had their forehead done, they may have had some anti-wrinkle to their frown lines, and then the person who hasn't had anything done might, th might say to themselves, well, you know what, maybe they're performing better because they've had some anti-wrinkle done. Perhaps I need to jump onto that too. Or perhaps it's something as simple as social media. Girls and guys out there, how many of you have looked on social media and you've looked and you thought to yourself, well, oh, those lips look really good. I think I want to go for that trend. Or even in saying that I see it so, so often during clinical practice, I'll get a trend of people coming in, a group at once, say over a period of a month, and they all come in for one particular procedure. And that is because of social media. Influencers out there who are saying they've had the lip flip, they've had this, they've had that, and then suddenly we see all in clinical practice as well. Or perhaps it's something deeper than that. Perhaps it's not peer pressure or it's not because you want to dabble into the cosmetic scene. Perhaps you're not confident about a feature on your face. You might not be happy with a particular way your smile hangs or you might not be happy with your forehead lines. Perhaps for you it's going to be a self-esteem boost. It's really important to consider why you want to have cosmetic injectables and think about whether that reason is going to justify you going through the process of having cosmetic injectables because as you'll find out very soon there are a lot of risks associated with it. My second tip from the why is what is your goal? So I will have patients that come to me and they say, Dr. Nora, please just give me a whole facelift. I want it all done. I don't care. I just want everything done. Sometimes there are limitations to what you can do with cosmetic injectables. It's really important and it helps your practitioner as well to know what your end goal is. For example, if you come with a very thin lip and you say to your practitioner, I really want to have massive lips. I want to have those big pouchy lips. Make them for me. Make it for me right now. Sometimes that is not always achievable in the first visit. So it's really important to understand what your goal is and working with your practitioner to know exactly how you can achieve your goal. And sometimes that goal may not work straight away. Perhaps sometimes it's going to take a year's period or it might take six months for you to achieve that goal. What I find most helpful during my cosmetic consults is having a patient who comes in and they bring in a picture with their ideal face or their ideal lips, for example, and they'll say to me, this is what I want to achieve. It really helps your cosmetic practitioner to understand what is going on in your head and what your goals are. And it also helps your expectations as well, because if your practitioner looks at that picture and then looks at you and says, you know what, I think we're going to struggle a little bit to get that result, then at least your expectations can be met and you won't feel so disappointed when you don't have that beautiful looking picture afterwards. Another important thing to consider when you're considering what your goals are is whether you want a subtle or you want a drastic change. I've seen two ends of the spectrum and very often I'll see older ladies who come in and they say to me, I just want to look fresh. I don't want people around me to know that I've had something done. I just want a very natural and subtle change. And typically this will help the cosmetic practitioner to address how many units they should be using for the anti wrinkle or how many mils of filler they should also be using. So it's super important to convey that to your cosmetic practitioner, whether you want a subtle change or if you want a more drastic change because that will help to dictate how much product is used and where the product is used as well. My third tip is to think about the money. Yes, it's not a very nice topic to talk about, but at the end of the day, cosmetic injectables do cost money. And there are a few facets that I wanted to address with this. Firstly, how much is it going to cost? So there are loads of clinics out there who advertise super cheap prices. And whilst actually that's not really allowed for them to do that because the medical board says that we strongly cannot advertise any prices online, yeah, I'll let that speak for itself. 
But certainly when you consider cosmetic injectables, they're a serious procedure. They carry a number of risks associated with them. And so if somebody is advertising that they're super cheap and that they're super affordable, is that really what you want to do? Is that person gonna give you good care? And I might be wrong, they may well give you good care, but what products are they using? Now, I have personally experienced um, a lot of cases where patients have gone to these super cheap clinics and they've had their procedures done, but I've heard some real shocking stories. One, I've heard that the products are not mixed correctly. Secondly, I've heard that the products, and there's loads of products out there, they're not quite good quality. They may have imported them from a different place, a different country that doesn't have the same strict rules and regulations that we do here in Australia. And so the efficacy of those products isn't very good, or it doesn't last as long as, say, a more expensive product. Going on from that, cosmetic injectable procedures are not exactly cheap. Yes, they may be more affordable than say your surgical procedures. For example, in Australia, say at the moment, currently, just as an estimation, if you were to have a non-surgical nose job, it might set you back around 900 to a thousand dollars. And that will last you about a good 12 months. Versus say a surgical nose job, which is a permanent procedure that can cost you anywhere from five, say to $10,000, depending on who you go for. So yes, in that respect, they are cheaper than say your permanent procedures, but there's still a hefty amount of money. And so I always say to my patients, you know, you really need to think about your finances and you need to budget forwards because what I like to say is that your cosmetic journey is not a here and now. It's a, it's a journey, it's a plan. We do a plan for you to have, if you want to have your cosmetic treatment say on a regular basis, you need to have some forward financial planning. And it's always really important to work with your cosmetic injector to find out what you can afford right now and if you need to save up a little bit more in the future, you can do so so that you can complete that cosmetic journey. Now, I've seen some pretty interesting cases in clinic and uh, really some people will surprise you about their monetary side of things. I had one lady who um, <laughs> she came to me in clinic and very unassuming lady. I wouldn't have thought that, you know, um, she wanted to get anything done, but she did get some things done and she did end up um, having about four mils of filler. And the funniest part of the whole <laughs> procedure or the process is she took out a big wadge of cash right at the end literally with thousands of dollars and said how do I pay you <laughs> so um, guys it's important to uh, budget obviously but please please don't spend your money that could be say money that's going for electricity or go money that's going for your food or your water bills make sure that it is money that you've saved up for and you've allocated it to one side in saying that, the lady was extremely happy with her results and she herself is now financially planning for the next bunch of cosmetic injectables that she wants to have done. So really important to discuss it with your practitioner. Most practitioners out there, they don't really want to take your money. I don't really want to take your money. I only want to give you the best kind of treatment that you will need in that time. And so if you feel that you're being pressured into um, a sale, which a lot of the cheaper companies might do, just take a step back and think to yourself, why am I being pressured? Why am I getting sold this procedure? My fourth tip is timing. This is uh, something that I cannot stress enough, guys. Cosmetic injectable treatments, they do take time to settle. I have seen it from both ends. I've seen it from one person who had a wedding that weekend and they wanted to get their fillers done. No, please do not do that. Please know that cosmetic injectables, they take time. Your anti-wrinkle treatments can take about two weeks for them to start working. And not only that, but if there happens to be a complication, if for example, the product has migrated somewhere and it's caused a bit of a drop or an eyebrow drop or an eyelid drop, that can take a few weeks to settle thereafter. So if you do have a big event like a wedding coming up, don't do it after two weeks. Don't do your cosmetic injectables and then have your wedding two weeks later. At least give yourself six to eight weeks for your cosmetic injectables to settle down before you have an event. Similarly with dermal fillers, again, they take time for them to settle in. Lip fillers, big no-no if you're gonna have lip fillers one day and then you're going to a party the next day because lip fillers, they swell up. Your lips will literally swell up for three to five days. You'll have bruising. You won't be able to cover it very well with makeup. You might be clever and you might be able to do that, but certainly it might ruin those lovely pictures that you're about to take. And so similarly with fillers as well, they take about two weeks for them to fully integrate into your natural collagen and your natural volume of tissue. So give yourself a good few weeks for it to settle in and calm down before you go ahead and have those beautiful happy snap pictures at that wedding. Going on from that, not only is it important to think about the events you're having, but it's also important to think about the timing in your life. So I have had patients who have come to me and they say to me, Doc, I really want to get my jaws done because I'm about to have a gastric sleeve. I'm about to lose all of this weight and I think my face is going to look so good when I get my jawline more defined. 
And I always, unfortunately, I turn these patients away because I say to them, hey, look, you're about to lose a lot of weight. We also have a lot of fat pads on our face. Just because you're gonna be losing some weight around your tummy, it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't be losing any weight around your face. So why not just go ahead, do your treatment, get your weight loss goals in order, and then come back to me once you've reached your target weight. Because unfortunately, I mean, it's very easy for me to say, yeah, sure, I'll do your cosmetic injectables, but knowing that I will know that that cosmetic injectable may not look, good, may not look as good when you finished your weight loss journey. And so if you are on a weight loss journey, make sure that your weight is at your target goal before approaching a cosmetic injector. It is all too easy for a cosmetic injector to say, yeah, sure, and lying through their teeth, yeah, sure, I'll do your cosmetic injectables, full knowing that things are gonna look a lot different once you've completed your weight loss journey. So make sure that you know that tip, that if you are planning on, say, a massive overhaul of your body, make sure you do cosmetic injectables as a last thing. That certainly does apply for your dermal fillers. Anti-wrinkle treatments, they can be done if you are on your weight loss journey, but do know that because your metabolism is changing whilst you're going through a weight loss journey, that it may not last as long. So it's really important to discuss this with your cosmetic practitioner if you are considering cosmetic procedures during your weight loss journey. My fifth point, and arguably the most important point of this whole video, is know what is involved. It is so easy to assume that cosmetic injectables are just a minor procedure that you get done and nothing ever bad is gonna happen. But guys, that is far from the truth. These are invasive procedures. That means that there is literally a needle that is going into your skin injecting products. There are so many risks that are involved that you really should be aware of before encountering any of these kind of procedures. Your cosmetic practitioner should be going through this with you at detailed length before you actually consent to your procedure. I've got a lot of videos on my channel and I'll leave some links in the description below of what the specific risks are for say your anti-wrinkle treatments and for your dermal fillers. But to give you a brief overview, for your anti-wrinkle injections, yes, there is a needle going into your skin. Yes, there's gonna be some bleeding, there's gonna be some bruising. And not only that, but sometimes the product can migrate, which means it can go to a different place. And that can lead you, leave you with some undesirable outcomes. For example, you might have a bit of a wonky eyelid. You might have a bit of a wonky eyebrow. Those effects can last for a couple of weeks even after you've had your cosmetic injectable treatment. And going on from that, your dermal fillers, so your lip fillers, your cheek fillers, your nose filler, oh my goodness, the list is endless in terms of what you can have done with fillers. But again, there are some risks that you need to be aware of. Yes, again, same thing with the needles. There are needles going into your skin and yes, you can have bruising, you can have bleeding. You can also have allergic reactions to the products as well. But not only that, for fillers, you can actually encounter some more serious side effects. You can end up with some lumps, so called granulomas or nodules, and they can be quite hard to remove. Not only that, but in some very serious situations, the filler can actually block off an arterial supply or a blood supply through a particular part of your face, and that can lead to cell death. That means some of the skin cells in your face actually die off. And in really severe cases, if it's an artery or a vessel in the wrong place, that can actually lead to blindness as well. Now, whilst this is very, very rare, it is still a complication that you need to be aware of. And these are things that you need to discuss with your cosmetic practitioner. These risks do vary according to which type of filler you're having. For example, a non-surgical nose job is gonna have a higher risk than say a lip filler. Though they still are both risky areas, it's really important to know that one is more riskier than the other. And that leads me to my next point. Who is your cosmetic injector? Oh yes, did you know that in Australia it is super simple for someone to pick up a needle and say, yes, I am a cosmetic doctor or I am a cosmetic practitioner and they may not have very much knowledge behind them. They may not know much about anything. They may not know anything about anatomy, but yet they can pick up a needle they may go to a one day course or they may know something online, they may have learned a module online and they can then become your cosmetic injector. Know who your injector is. Generally speaking, cosmetic injectors need to have a sound knowledge of your anatomy. This is like an ABC must. People who are doing injectables need to know where they're injecting to because if you inject, say, into the wrong place, you're gonna end up with more complications. And so choose somebody who knows what the facial anatomy is because if there are any complications or side effects that are undesirable, that person should know how to reverse it and how to deal with those complications. That goes for Australia. In Australia, people who want to become cosmetic injectables can be doctors, nurses, or they can be dentists. However, in other countries, the laws are a little bit more relaxed. For example, in England, when I was working there, pretty much anyone could be a cosmetic injector. Now, this could be a beauty therapist, a pharmacist, a dentist, you know, the list goes on. 
So it's really important. And I'm not discrediting any practitioner out there, but just make sure that that person that you're going to has got a wealth of experience behind them, has been to an accredited course, has got some maybe some portfolio online so that you can see that they're actually a practitioner who does a good job, but make sure you choose that practitioner very carefully. You might even choose to go for, say, a plastic surgeon. And a plastic surgeon is a doctor who is trained for seven years plus and has done a bunch of extra examinations through their medical board and they know exactly where everything is on the body and they are very highly skilled. Going down from that, you may choose a doctor. And again, saying that doctors, not every doctor is trained the same way. Yes, they may be a doctor, but have they been experienced or have they been trained in the facial anatomy? Do they know where certain muscle groups are? Do they know where the filler should be placed? Do they know how to reverse a filler if it goes wrong? Have they got the knowledge and the experience that you're after? Similarly for nurses, again, the same rule applies. Have they gone to a course? Do they know what they're injecting into? Do they have a sound anatomical knowledge of the face or other parts of the body? And again, the same is true for a dentist as well. So really, you have to suss out who you're going to. It goes back to my earlier point, cheaper doesn't always mean better. Perhaps they're cheap because they don't have any cosmetic experience. Perhaps they just want to test run, see if this is for them. See if they, you know, they might have been on a course or they might have had an online module and they, they want to kind of test the water and see if they like this. You know, are they experienced enough? Do they have enough knowledge? Word of mouth is often a really good way of choosing your practitioner. And not only is word of mouth a great way of knowing who you're getting in for, but perhaps just looking at their social media channels. And I would take this with a pinch of salt because a lot of people on social media will actually edit or doctor their pictures in a way that they may be a bit misleading. And now this is highly, highly, highly um, undesirable. And this is something that the uh, medical board in Australia actually will get very upset about if they see people on social media giving people um, a misleading information to the public. So when you are looking at people's before and after pictures, take a look and see what the lighting is like because there's a lot of trickery that you can do with photography and you can make someone's lips look bigger by say moving the camera down a little bit or changing the angle of the face or even just using a different kind of light. And you can even make someone's wrinkles go away by say putting them in a, a more darker room than say a lighter room. So when you are looking at social media before and after pictures, make sure that you're actually analyzing them. Don't just take them on face value and think, oh yeah, that's a really good job. Because sometimes you can use a little bit of photography trickery to make you think that that person's done a good job. Whew, Dr. Nora, this has been an informative video. I'm not even sure if I want to have cosmetic treatments. Well, that leads me on to my final point. After hearing all of those tips, have a careful think about it. Is this really what you want to do? Are you now more well informed? Do you want to go ahead and have that cosmetic injectable? And if the answer is yes and you're well informed, then I really do wish you all the very best of luck. And please make sure that you do seek a second opinion from a qualified, appropriately trained healthcare practitioner. And on the converse of that, if the answer is no, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm quite happy with my face or my body, then well, good for you for also being aware and knowledgeable of what the risks are. I hope that you found this video useful. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy. Oh, who plays the piano? Wait, it's me, Dr. Nora. I play the piano. My fifth point, which is probably, I'd say arguably the most important point of this whole video, is know what is involved in a cosmetic procedure. Okay, we've seen it on the television. Oh, it looks so simple. Oh, we can just get rid of these lines. Oh, we can just do this. No guys, these are actual invasive procedures. Why? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I'm the guy from the uh, latest Instagram post, by the way. Yes, there he is. Metabolism, drinking some Pepsi Max. She's making these amazing videos for you guys. I'm here disturbing them. Sorry, Literally, no I'm giving them gold right now. I'm giving you gold in my beautiful set. This one's actually for a, a lucky um, subscriber out there. Her name is Mary, and she's always been holding out for a blooper. Finally giving her one. <laughs> Love you, Mary. Back, back to work. Back to work, you I'm go. Building the set. Yeah, you built the set for me. All right, thank you.